I've found it challenging to really care about Dunlop rackets in the past. The FX500 simply never inspired me the same way Pure Arrows or E-Zones have. But I've been wondering, how has this racket found so much success in the hands of one of Britain's young and most exciting players, Jack Draper? Jack Draper gets his biggest win. And will his racket's retail Chris counterpart be able to ignite those massive forehands in us all? Yeah. Oh, wow. I knew that if I bought Jack Draper's racket, I would instantly be blessed with his natural forehand power and dashing good looks. But in reality, it looks like Jack is still using his old Dunlop Srikshan Revo. Uh, wow. I am very glad that Dunlop has changed their naming conventions because that is an absolute mouthful. Under an FX500 paint job. Anyway, so you can see on the mold of the throat of his old um, CV3.0F, it's quite different compared to the new FX500. I've honestly got no idea what this change in mold is actually supposed to do, but I think there are some interesting lessons that we can learn from Jack's setup. The overall specs between his CV3.0F and the new FX500 are actually quite similar. Both are 100 square inch rackets with very thick beams at 23, 26, 23 millimeters, both with high stiffnesses around 70 RA. The stock swing weights are also the same at 317 for the older model and 321 for the new FX500. The stock average twist weight on both models is also quite high with the Revo coming in at 14.8 and the FX500 coming in at a segment busting 16.2 which is like absolutely nuts. Thank you so much to Courtside for supplying the racket for this review. The owners of Courtside have long been one of my most important supporters. It's safe to say that Tencom simply would not exist without Courtside support. They were the ones who initially trusted me to make racket review videos for their own channel back in 2020. As a junior, Jack had a very different game than the one he has now. At 16, the kid was only 5 foot 7. He was tiny, relying on speed and counter punching to win matches. Today, you can still see remnants of the scrappy baselining junior in his game. The way he's happy to just sit on the baseline and grind out long points, capable of finding the winning pass off either his two-handed backhand or big lefty forehand. Oh, and while most kid. tall players tend to have flatter strokes, Jack is an exception. The natural height of taller players like Sinner or Chilich allow them to contact the ball at a much higher point, making it easy to flatten out shots. But growing up, Jack was always smaller and skinnier than his opponents, so he developed a really spin-heavy game. Today, he easily averages well over 3,000 RPM off his forehand side during a match. For reference, he's in the same category as guys like Nadal, Team and Casper Root. In this hitting footage, you can see Jack really brushing up the back of the ball, laying on a huge amount of topspin. This is something that I personally really struggle with when using high twist weight rackets, like the Pure Arrow VS, the E-Zone 100, and the new 2023 Pure Arrow. And yet somehow, like Jack, I found easy access to topspin from all areas of the court with the Dunlop FX500. The FX500 has a surprisingly quick feel through the air given its 16 twist weight. It's very easy to accelerate that racket head. As we know, high racket head speeds are among the most critical factors when it comes to hitting big spin. But there's something extra that the Dunlop offers. There's so much dwell time on the string bed for a racket of this stiffness, it really feels like it's gripping and ripping that ball. So I did some research to figure out how this is possible, and it looks like Dunlop has implemented what they call a power groove. Actually, for 2023, they call it a power 
plus groove, but whatever. What it is is a small channel running beneath the grommets. This allows the grommet to flex during the ball impact, effectively acting as a sort of suspension system, enhancing that trampoline effect. It really feels like your strings are sinking in, gripping the ball, and slingshotting it out, making the energy transfer feel very efficient. It actually really reminded me of these Bolt series of rackets that we tried recently that had a very active suspension system built in. The FX500 has that same sort of exaggerated trampoline effect, where the ball really sinks into the string bed and shoots out with what feels like a lot of additional energy. Dunlop's power groove acts very similar to Bolt's zip strips, but the effect is significantly more mild. Instead of separate flexing pieces like the zip strips, the grommet itself Itself is the foundation of the suspension, flexing downward into the power groove at contact. This tech was actually available in the last FX500, which I never had the chance to try. However, for this year, this channel is 0.5 millimeters deeper and wider before, which is supposed to allow for more flex. Dunlop says that this equates to about a 5% more efficient rebound, suggesting that it should lead to increased ball speeds and spin. Speaking of increased ball speeds, that's what the FX500 is really all about. The power on the FX500 feels absolutely elastic. For most of us, power can be defined as a combination of ball speed and depth. The FX500 makes it very easy to hit those big, deep balls just the way I like them. But in all seriousness, the balls shoot off the string bed with this sort of elasticity. If you've ever tried natural gut, it has the same kind of elastic power. It feels like the string is really slingshotting the ball out of the string bed. And the FX500 has that same feel even when strung with a full bed of poly. For this review, I strung the FX500 with my usual Grapple Snake Tour Sniper 1.25 at 52 pounds. Our partnership with Grapple Snake has been one of the main reasons that we are able to keep this channel going. If you'd like to support the creation of more videos, please consider using our affiliate links in the description, where you can get 10% off my favorite tennis strings on the market. If you're looking for something with elite tension maintenance, Grapple Snake strings are simply unmatched in today's marketplace. They've got strings for all kinds of players. Tour Sniper plays like a softer, more spin-friendly ALU power that actually lasts for a long time in your racket. Tour N8 plays its best at low, low tensions, offering the best ball pocketing experience of any string that I've tried, barring natural gut. And Alpha is like Tour Sniper's ultra comfortable cousin, while the Neon Hybrid is the place to go for all of you spin doctors out there. The FX500 is also really, really stable. It's absolutely what you would expect from something with a 16 twist weight. Just so you know, a 16 twist weight is absolutely nuts. Most mainstream rackets will range between 14 and 15 points, but other manufacturers really haven't bothered to increase twist weight beyond 15 in a 100 square inch racket. But as I'm learning, Dunlop seems to really be pushing the envelope with their racket innovations. The combination of the power group suspension system with that super high twist weight and the 69 RA with that super thick 26 millimeter beam makes this racket one of the most torsionally stable rackets that I've ever used. Feels almost like an oversized racket with how resistant it is to twisting at impact. There's almost zero fluttering even on the worst off-center shots. Plenty of power, spin, and ball pocketing is available throughout the string bed. As mentioned, there seems to be this elastic feel to the FX500. The dwell time feels extremely long when compared to its competitors like the Pure Drive or the E-Zone 100. I really feel like this is due to the power groove thing because I just haven't tried other rackets with this high of an RA that can hold the ball on the strings for this long. Even though the ball pocketing is top notch, the racket's feel is not too muted. The overly muted rackets that currently dominate the 100 square inch racket space 
have been one of the primary reasons that I'm struggling to find a replacement for my extreme tour. The majority of the racket industry is really trying to dampen stiff rackets to retain power and stability without sacrificing comfort. The leading examples are Yonex's VDM or vibration dampening mesh and Bablux Cortex which has since evolved to C2 pure feel. But I really don't think that this is the right move. Dampening just kills all the feel in these rackets. I much prefer Don application of suspension to add comfort. It reduces the amount of shock that's transferred from the string bed into the frame without sapping every single drop of feel. This results in a stellar combination of feel, comfort, and ball pocketing for such a powerful and stable racket. Dunlop's Power Plus Groove is also a lot more predictable and controllable than the suspension that we found in the Bolt rackets a couple of weeks ago. Control is always one of my biggest concerns when it comes to reviewing these power rackets. The muted feel and open string bed of rackets like the Pure Drive make it really hard to locate your contact point on the string bed, making control relatively unpredictable. The Zone 100 is better with a denser string bed and a more connected feel, but I really struggle to generate spin to control the ball due to the below average maneuverability in that frame. And while control and precision is definitely not the strength, the FX500, it is something that really impressed me relative to other rackets in this segment. The feel is more connected than the pure drive so you can easily locate the ball on the string bed. The amount of spin that you can generate the FX500 makes it a lot easier to control the ball than the E-Zone 100. And while the FX500 definitely isn't the most controllable 100 square inch racket out there, it is one of its strengths relative to the competition and that really impressed me throughout the playtest. The combination of the great feel, incredible stability, and surprisingly good spin make the Dunlop FX500 one of the most appealing 100 square inch rackets on the market. It's a racket that allowed me to channel the big heavy hitting of Drac Draper. Taking massive loopy cuts on the ball is incredibly rewarding with the FX500. The combination of the great feel, the incredible stability, and the surprisingly good spin make the Dunlop FX500 one of the most appealing 100 square inch rackets on the market. It's a racket that really allowed me to channel the big heavy hitting of Jack Draper. You've got enough control to take full big swings on every single shot. You've got enough maneuverability to just whip up the back of the ball on your forehand hitting huge spin, getting a nice arc, and there's more than enough power and stability on tap. So where even you're on the back of the court, you're playing defense, you can just flick that ball back over the net, finding that extra pass that you need to win that point. If you're looking for a pure drive but need some better feel, this is your racket. If you're looking at the E-Zone 100 and you want something a little bit faster through the air, this is your racket. If you're looking for the easy access to depth, power, spin, and stability, I personally don't think that there's much better out there than Dunlop's FX500. It's safe to say that I'm incredibly impressed with this racket, and if you want to pick up a copy, www.courtsidesports.com, use code 10COM10 for 10% off this absolute gem. Do not sleep on Dunlop, they're actually good now.